Hello, and welcome to Learn JavaScript with Creative Coding. I am Dr. Abstract, and this is video number seven. Right, we're here at the Zim site, zimjs.com, and if we scroll on down to the school, we're at the end of lesson two. So we've been looking at animation, and it was mentioned that there were more types of animations. Well, let me just show you an animation that we did recently. Now, this was primarily to animate in interface, but also there's this thing called a wiggle, and perhaps we could look briefly at a wiggle as well. <laughs> Sounds fun, huh? So under examples here, it's in the code pen section, Dr. Abstract's car. And indeed, it just uh, reminded me because we've been happened to be using this car. You ready for it? Might be a little loud for you. Well, not so bad yet. Uh, one of the things about sound, this is Zim with sound, is in later later browsers or, or uh, well, what do you call it, uh, mobile browsers, but also now in current browsers, you have to click on the, the screen before sound will activate. It's just so that we don't play sound when you're you're not ready for it. So there's often a need for a little go button or something like this. Baby, you can tune my car and are you ready? Huh? All right, let's uh, take the sound down on that. So this is an example. We've got a bunch of animations happening here. You see this sort of backing colors or animating and giving it a bit of, of life. Uh, we are animating this along the bottom as well. That's done with a scroller, so that's a, a different type of thing. And then we're jostling or wiggling that car around. But in the initial animation, we animated in the car and we animated in this navigation. Shall we check that out again? Are you ready? We'll do a refresh here. I, I guess hit a run. And we press. Right, each of those, and, and this one, this thing animated and that animated, so all kind of animated in. All right, you can take a look at that example at your leisure. Right now, here's here's the car that we've got, and if we refresh this, uh, we turn the animation off. Right? Okay, so let's go back to our code. So this is the code that we were working in in the last video. You might want to certainly check out the last video, or even right from the beginning if you haven't seen any of these yet. Up top in the last video, we showed you how you can stop that animation and immediately show your work as if the animation is finished. There's a technique by using this animate from and that animate constant. And now if we refresh after commenting that, there's our animation. Why don't we, I want to show you a series, or sorry, a sequence. I've got both those words. A series is one animation after another, and we'll mention that. But the sequence is um, when a bunch of things, say in a container, all all animate. So let's uh, let's animate in these dials. We'll make a few dials and we'll we'll just bring them in, and that will show us how how we did that. Okay. So coming on down in here, we'll go to the very bottom of the code we were working in, and we need to make some dials. Okay, a dial looks like this. New dial round brackets dot uh, why don't we loke this just for now loke at 100 100 100 100 uh, there we go that will automatically put the registration point of the dial which is a round thing so that's the center of it at position 100 100 on the stage so that's pretty close to the corner and there's there's a default dial. So the dial is much like a slider, except it's round. You can make the dial go keep on going around, but right now the dial only goes up to what is that? Well it depends on how you start counting. But nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It goes to ten. But note it stops there. And uh, like any component, you can change colors and the min and the max, well, not every component has a min and a max, but etc. Lots of 
lots of parameters there. So if we make a few of these, uh, one, two, three, why not uh, make three of them and then we'll animate them in in a sequence. So uh, we won't locate it and the easiest way to make three things is in, it's, it's called a controls and we get to see the controls later. Controls are things in Zim that act on stuff that already exists, act on a display object. So there's a motion controller to help you make something follow the mouse or use even a game stick, a game pad joystick type thing. Um, uh, we're not really looking at controls right now, but it's, it's called a tile. So it, it looks like this new tile and we specify what we want to tile. So let's tile our dial. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Hopefully you don't sample that and turn it into some rap song. Tile your dial, tile your dial, baby, tile, tile your dial. All right, so we're, we're going to tile the dial. And how many of these dials do we want? Three of them. So, whoops, that's, yeah, that's columns. How many rows of dials? One row of dials, please. <laughs> Unless we're making some musical, musical instrument device thing or a sound recorder. We can 10 rows of dials. Yeah, oh, that, that would work. And then the next parameter here is the spacing in the horizontal. So we'll go with 20. Well, actually, how about more? How about 50? And then the spacing in the vertical, which we can just leave out by default at zero. And we don't even, we've only got one, one row, so there's no need for that. And then we will dot, sure, we'll dot loc that at, I don't know, uh, what 40 comma 40 I think 60 looks like it might have uh, gone in we'll move that over a hundred or move thing uh, no sorry that's down so we'll move it over a hundred and we'll bring it down 40 X is almost always first Y is second all right drop that down like so there we go we have a tile of dials and let's have a look sure I it is indeed a tile of dials. Now, where'd we make this? Okay, the car is going under the dials, that's fine. The tile of dials. Now, to animate those in, you could, of course, try and animate in one at a time, and we have a nice, easy way to be able to loop through, through containers. The tile is a container and holds those dials. The tile's a special container that allows you to easily tile something inside a container. Have we seen containers? We haven't really, and that actually might have been something that we should have looked at when we talked about display objects. We mentioned it. You can put those display objects in a container and then move around the whole container. It sort of slipped in my mind. You're going to be going out there into the, the wild world not knowing what a container is. Uh, if you're from the HTML world, a container is much like a div, for instance. It's just an invisible holder and you put things in it. And then you can act on that container all at once. You can uh, you could animate the whole container. You could animate each element in the container. That's what I'm going to show you coming up here. You can set the alpha of the whole container, or move the whole container, remove the whole container from the stage, and add a whole container. That's how we do one page and then another page. We just put the one page in one container, put the other page in another container, and uh, then we hide or we remove and add those containers. All right, well, there's a description. Uh, these tiles are in a container. Shall we, what's that called? Uh, outline it. Well, we're going to outline that to see what that container looks like. Refresh here. There we go. That's the, the the boundary or the bounds, sorry, not the boundary, the bounds. We have a thing called a boundary. When we drag something, we can set a boundary as to where we want to drag that. So that's different than the bounds. The bounds is uh, the where where we think the, well, where we know the bounds <laughs> of the options are. Nothing like defining bounds, <laughs> the edges, defining bounds with the word bounds, uh, the edges of the, of the object. And that sometimes comes into play when you position something it will position the right hand bounds from the right hand side when you specify right it 
uh, it helps with things like hit tests. Uh, we check to see if the bounds are hitting first because it's a nice fast equation. And then later we check to see if the shapes inside are hitting. Okay, so there's the bounds of the container. So really these three things are in one place. So you can imagine that a container, the other route to go, uh, basically what this is doing, sorry for the little diversion into containers, would be saying make a uh, const holder, I can call it a holder, is equal to a new container, like so. And then we would put the dials in there. So we would make a new dial dot add to holder. So there, we just put the dial in the holder container. Now we should put the container on the stage dot loc at 100 comma 100. And let's see what happens. So we save that up. We refresh here. Now we've got one dial in that container. Uh, now it's interesting to note that shifted a little bit. The reason is this dial is cent center reg. So when we put it in the container at zero, zero, half of the dial is actually outside the container on the left. Uh, this is a small nuance. I'm not sure it's worth looking at, but uh, we got a bit of time probably. If we were to outline that again, outline, you wouldn't quite expect what we're about to see. There's the container and it's zero zero is right there in the middle and that's where we put when we added the added the dial it added it right to the uh, the middle therefore some of it is over here on the left and it puts the bounds around whatever shape we added. And now if we add another dial to this. We have to sort of be aware of that. So we make a new dial. Oh, I suppose we could do the whole thing here. A new dial. We'll add it to the container, but then we'll want to move. And what a minute. Oh, that was looking at the dial. Okay, so hang on. We're going to outline the container. Let's just do that over again. Make sure it looks the same. Refresh here. And I don't see it. I know why. Because it gave us an error message saying we can't outline something that has nothing in it. It doesn't have a bound set. So instead, we'll outline it down here after. So holder dot outline, like so. You get it? So we just outlined it when there's nothing in it and it couldn't, couldn't show an outline because there's nothing in it. So that would have given us an F12 message saying Zim methods outline. Please set bounds on the object. We don't we, we don't know how big it is to be able to make the container. There's just nothing in it. So we save that. We save it here. And we refresh here. So it looks the same. And then we're going to add another one in there. We we'll need to move this outline till after we've added both of these in here. We don't need to outline that. So we've got two things in here, but we better move this one over. Dot move. Uh, we can move it over 100. I think that might be the default. Well, we're going to see that might be the default width of one of these things. It looks like maybe it's 50, maybe it's 100. Yeah, is that 100? Probably is. Which means these ones won't look very good. They're going to go right, right next to one another. So how about move it over 150? All right, and we refresh here. So here's what the container now looks like, but this is an awkward container, wouldn't you say? in that we've got the, the registration point of this container is centered on the first tile, which means when we position it at 100, 100, it, it's not as expected. It's not sort of positioning this top corner at 100, 100. So you have to kind of watch that. Sometimes, since containers, containers can work in two ways, they, their registration, or sorry, their, their bounds can grow naturally. If you don't specify a dimension of the container when you build it, it will just grow with whatever you put in there and you have to sort of be careful how you grow that or and you can use the outline to to find out what what has happened this would be completely different if what we had put in here was a a square object like if, if both of these were a new rectangle for instance like that 
uh, we'd see something much more regular. And we refresh here. There we go. The, our container of those two rectangles moved over 100, 100. The registration point is 0, 0 is top left corner. It's as we expected. But when we start, first started growing with a dial, they're circular. So this would be the same issue with a circle. If we put a circle in there, its registration point is in the middle. So we, we end up with kind of an awkward rectangle where you know our, our registration point's not in the corner of it. All right, uh, so we're digressing there, but you know, why not, I suppose. The other way to do it is to take the container and give it bounds to start. So if we know that we've got two dials and there looks like they're 100 in width and 100 in height, we could say that the container's width will be 150 and the container's height will be 100. When we give it a width and a height like that, if we were to add the dial to it, uh, it would still cause a problem. Do you want to see what this looks like now? It's, it's going to be not as expected either. Let me refresh here. Uh, this is not uh, what we expected. And I think also we got the wrong dimensions. So we want 100 for this dial, 50, and another 100 for this dial. So 250. And even that, even if we fix that up, 250 in the width, it's still not going to look very good. What the problem is, is we just added the dial at a zero, zero in it, and the dial has its registration point in the middle. So here it is, and then we added another dial, put it here, and then we moved it over 100. And now that doesn't look very good either. So you have to take a bit of care when you're building inside of containers. If that's the case, uh, great, those are probably the right dimensions, but when we go to add this, we're, we're not really wanting to add it there. We want to uh, add it, uh, basically we want to pose it on the holder at zero, zero. And so zero, comma zero, but holder is not the next parameter there. So we, we could put in left comma top if, if we wanted. That would be zero, zero, the left and the top in the holder. And this dial will now look better. The other dial still will be wrong. You see that? So this is pose the left-hand side of this object there and the top at zero and zero. The other one, we could go to the, the right. So copy that put it here and we can say to the right and the top. Actually top or bottom probably won't matter here. And that positioned it in the right place. You can also, if you wanted to, if you really did want to use the loc, loc at 50 comma 50. And the other one we could loc at, uh, let's see, 50, it'll be 100 comma 50. So, but that, that takes a little bit of mathematics to do that. And there we go. It's a, the same, same place. Anyway, instead of doing that, instead of making a whole bunch of dials or whatever we're wanting to put in the container and trying to figure out where we're moving them, we could l do this thing called a loop and we could make dials in a loop and then move things over based on the loop number. And we'll show you some of that for sure when it comes to the lessons of looping. But instead of doing any of that, we can also use the Zim tile, which is a convenience for doing just what we've been talking about here. So we'll get rid of all, oops, we'll comment out all of that and we'll bring back our tile of dials. All right, so there was our little digression. We will now continue on and uh, get back to the point. And the point was animating in this tile. So if we dot animate the whole tile, it would uh, look like this. Let's, I guess we'll drop down into the Zim Duo technique here of the configuration object from our last lesson in two. And then we will animate a props of uh, X. Should we do this one with a from? We probably should. So we'll go from minus, 
200, I guess, minus 300. Somewhere off the screen to the left, we'll animate in in a time of 700 milliseconds. And from, cool, uh, <laughs> I'm putting an, an E on the end of from, from colon true. Look good. And why don't we add a back, E's colon uh, back out like that. And let's see what that looks like. We might want to increase the time on that a bit, 800. The back adds a little bit of time for us. All right, there they come. Now, uh, not only that, but we'll want to wait on that. Why don't we do that now? Oops, don't do that without a comma. Comma wait, colon, mm, 1,000. So we're going to wait a second. I can't remember if we need to wait more than that. We might have to, 1,500. All right, remember our JavaScript basics. This is an object literal. Uh, we have the name of the property and some value with a comma. So don't forget those commas as you go. If you've got a list here like that, sometimes it's easy to forget the comma. Yeah, it'd be nice if we actually, if we were on different lines, maybe we could figure that out for us. <laughs> oh, well, that's not too hot. So. It appears that we haven't moved that over quite enough. I think it moved over fine for the other one, but what do we do? We make it minus ooh, four. How much of the one was showing? 450. And we refresh here. It's gone. And we animate in. Now, that might be fine, but uh, we're now here for the new thing. We want to show you a sequence. Sequence colon. How about 100 milliseconds in between? So what the sequence does, if what you're animating is a container, which the tile is, if it's a container that holds uh, things, because that's what a container does, then it will animate each thing in the container. As soon as we set sequence on, it will animate each thing in the container. Uh, the first one will go right away. The next one will go after 100, well, the first one goes at the wait time, which is here. Next one goes at 100 milliseconds later. So quite quickly, let's see if that works. You ready? That's quite magical. Nah, that wasn't magical. <laughs> what happened? This is the first thing in the tile. So this is the first one that animated in. This one right here came in and animated after, and this one came in <laughs> I made it after that, so it looks like they all bump into one another. Unfortunately, that was, wasn't very magical. So how do we make that uh, go backwards? I think in this case it's something like sequence, if I remember correctly, reverse, reverse. There's a couple ways we could do it true like that. Let's see if this, if this handles it for us. We'd have to look at the documentation on that. Yeah, that's better. So in comes the first one, whoosh, whoosh, and then the next one, and then the next one. We might even want to bump that up to, say, 300. Let's see how that looks. Refresh. <laughs> 300. The, the longer the time, the more it kind of eases with a back. I'm not sure that it's... Uh, I guess we want um, less... Let's see, the more of the sequence time. Now that shouldn't be, this is the time that's affecting the back. So let's drop that a little bit to um, 500. We'll drop this a little bit to 250 and see if it has the effect that we like. They're still going too far and bumping into one another. Maybe it's their distance. Uh, what can we do about that? that. Well, we can increase their spacing, but you may not want to do that. We could go to 70. I just kind of don't like them bumping into one another. They do seem like they're animating in a little bit fast. So we'll bring that back up to 600. How's our wait time? We'll drop our wait time. You now, maybe we just can't do the back because they are bumping into one another. And that was a touch too much for me. So here, I'll try it here. However, we want to watch our time a little bit. Yeah, that looked all right, huh? What do you think? Okay, and if you don't like the back, then you don't have to have it. And here's the nice thing about putting things on multiple lines like that. We just comment that out and see if we like this one better. 
or whatever. Maybe, maybe not. If you're doing it like that, then you could bring your sequence to probably a bit faster. One five. Anyway, we we're supposed to, supposed to be watching our time. Where, <laughs> yeah, such is the life of animating. You just uh, how do you like that? Designers are like, okay, what do you guys think? Oh, I don't know. Okay, let's go get a coffee, and they go off go and get a coffee, and then like, the ten of them come back, and they're all pouring over how long they're going to spend on this uh, <laughs> this ease, and that's nice. A Zim is almost easy enough. Uh, speaking of easing. The Zim is almost easy enough for designers to, to get uh, pretty quickly right out of the box. So um, if you are a designer, I'm really glad you're here. We made Zim for you. We also made Zim for, well, for everybody. It'd be great if coders come in. Sometimes the professional coders, you know, have been doing this stuff for a long time. They, they find that Zim is almost too easy for them. <laughs> it's just like, I, I want to do my own particle emitter. <laughs> and, you know, we just we give you a particle emitter. Uh, I wouldn't worry too much about that. What, what we should be concentrating more on is uh, what we're building, our story, our assets, uh, the interactivity, the, the actual fun part of the coding, the, the logic and all that stuff. We shouldn't be worrying about how to make an emitter or how to make a button or how to animate something. It's, uh, that's probably better left for the framework. So good, you've seen a sequence. Uh, the series is a little bit different. The series just will animate one thing and then when that's done, it will animate another thing. And so uh, that's especially handy. Why don't we go take a look at, at that, uh, an example. Here's examples. Do we have the animation examples in general here? Did I put them down below? Uh, animation, 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 animation. Do, do, do. Yeah, here it is, animation right here. So the one we're looking at, and let's turn all of these off except for the series, and that way you can concentrate a little bit. That, by the way, was a pause animate. When we press that checkbox, we say uh, the, the whatever is being animated, uh, rectangle dot pause animate. You can also set IDs as to what to pause. So right now we have one thing going, and that's this series. Do you see what it's doing? It's moving from one place to another, then it's getting smaller and bigger. Uh, that was rewind and loop, and we didn't really, as a matter of fact, let's click on this, and we can take a look. If we were to make a rectangle, then we can say rectangle.animate, and here's the sequence. So the sequence is done by putting whatever properties, these are the, uh, not the props, but these are the animation objects. Normally we would just pass that one thing into animate right there. Well now we've got three things of those. So each time we're changing which props we want to animate, and it'll take 700 milliseconds to do the first one, then it will do this one with a rewind of true. So there's how we can get a rewind. And then here's the, the last one where we're animating, I guess, back to the X. So we're animating over to the right. We're setting its uh, props, uh, which means we've animated 100. We could have done that with relative animation as well. Remember what relative animation looks like? It has the quotes around it. All right, um, how about we just quickly then, uh, in here, what would it be like if we wanted to rewind this? Here's what would happen. Rewind, colon, true. Can you imagine what's going to happen? Uh, here, refresh. Whoop, whoop, whoop. <laughs> and as soon as that one stopped, whoop, 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 out it went backwards. Uh, so not great. Hey, tell you what, why don't we turn the sequence off just for a sec and see now what that rewind looks like. In it comes, out it goes. In, out. So it just rewound the animation. What would a loop look like? Loop colon true, comma. So that we can get to, well, it doesn't matter anymore, the sequence reverse. We refresh here. In it comes, out it goes, in it comes, out it goes, in it comes, out it goes, in it comes, etc. <laughs> it's going so fast it didn't even get all the way out there. Well, what would a loop look like true but with no rewind? Refresh. In it comes, 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 in it comes. Okay, so not much fun there, huh? 
All right, so those are uh, how you can apply loops and rewinds. There's also various weights. Uh, maybe what would be better is if we rewind true, loop true, but then we rewind weight, colon, one second, comma. So now we're going to wait after we rewind. Oh, after we wait, back, right, back. Ah, we might want a loop weight as well. Let's see what a loop weight does. So that would be loop weight, colon, uh, one second, comma. So now we're going to run it, wait, go back, come back, come back, wait. And you can call functions at any of those times as well. What do you think? All right, we don't want to do any of that stuff though. We can bring back in our sequence and our sequence reverse. And what did I want to show you next? We've only got a minute or two here. I think I promised you to, to show you wiggle, so why don't we make the car wiggle? Uh, we had done that in, in the, the other one as well. So here's, where's our car? Here's our car. We're going to animate in. And uh, was this the car? Nope, that's a slider. We don't want to wiggle our slider. The annoying wiggling slider. <laughs> Go to try and use it, and it's just wiggling all over the place. So here's the car. We've animated. And now I think what we need is a call. So when we're done, we'll call this function. And we're using an arrow function once again. We haven't seen functions yet, so sorry about that. Uh, are you are you just dying for functions? It's like, what are you doing? Is it like you're learning JavaScript? We haven't seen functions yet. I don't understand. Um, yeah, we'll get there. Like I said, we're doing some visual things, and we'll come back to the the sort of not some of the less visual things, but some of the more logical. Uh, I don't know, wordy kind of stuff, you know, or just looking at these symbols. We don't see any results from that. Uh, we'll look at that in a bit. All right, so we're going to call a function when we stop animating, and that function will be wiggle the car. So we'll say car.wiggle, like that. So there we are uh, in this function. We are saying the name of the object, followed by a dot, the dot syntax, the method, and then inside the method, we get to say what we want to wiggle and how. Let's wiggle the rotation, maybe. And this would be as a string, rotation property, please. If you just go and put the word rotation there, it has no idea what that means. So we're trying to tell the wiggle the type of thing we're wanting to do is, a, is rotation. If we put the word rotation there, it would think that that's a variable or a constant name or something, and, and that doesn't exist, so it would have a problem. So there we are, passing in rotation, and then we say, how much do we want to rotate? Oh no, sorry, the starting rotation. So we're going to rotate it around zero rotation. Then what is the minimum amount of rotation we want? How about one degree? This might even be too much, believe it or not. And what is the maximum rotation? Three degrees, and that's definitely going to be too much. And then, uh, yeah, it's a sort of a delicate thing. Cars, when they jiggle a little bit, do not rotate three degrees. <laughs> You'll see why in just a moment. And then the minimum amount of time uh, depends on how fast we want, but 500 milliseconds maybe to a second, perhaps. So this is what gives the wiggle. Uh, what are we wiggling about? What's the minimum amount we want to wiggle? What's the maximum amount we want to wiggle? The minimum time. And each time it wiggles, it picks randomly from between these two numbers in the maximum amount of time. Okay, so when we finish animating here, we're going to wiggle the car. Nice. Do you like that? So in comes a car. <laughs> and then there she wiggles. It's more like a boat. There we go. We're wiggling the boat. So we want it to go faster like it's a jostling. And we probably also want to wiggle the height of it as well. So if you want to wiggle the height, wiggle is an individual thing. All these things are so individual. You just wiggle again. So there's the car dot wiggle. And you would uh, then wiggle again down here. But just for, we need to get rid of that semicolon. And so we could wiggle the height, jostle it up and down a bit. Uh, this starts at the car's height, so car dot y is the current height, 
And then what is this? This is uh, like maybe know, three pixels to five pixels, something like that. I think we're needing to go faster, 200 to, to 300. Same with here, we need to be faster, 100 to 300. And the rotation should be less, 0.5 to um, something like oh, 0.6. <laughs> there, yeah, we refresh here. Yeah, in it comes. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, that looks a little better, doesn't it? So, not too bad. Now, the shadow actually should wiggle, or not wiggle. It, it should act independently, but uh, hopefully we'll get away with it. Uh, I am an engineer, an inventor and an engineer. I know how things work, you know. And I also know that we've, uh, we've um, reached the 35 minutes here. We've been talking about animation. That's kind of cool. In the next lesson, uh, in when we talk about JavaScript, I suspect, anyway, that we're going to be moving more towards uh, some basics. I think we're going to see functions in the next in the next lesson. That's great. Isn't this fun? But you got to wiggle a car. You got some animation. You saw some cool things here. I am Dr. Abstract. And this fellow, it's the last time you're going to see this one. Right, yeah, and we'll come back with another closing animation for the next uh, lesson. It's been fun to have you here. Hopefully you're enjoying this. Please join us at zimjazz.com. That's the, the normal site, but also at zimjazz.com slash slack, where you can ask us any questions, say hi. Uh, we'd love to see you there. Ciao. All the best. <laughs>